Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jyoti Singh, Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. My supervisor is Professor Jack Chang, and my paper ID is 519, and the topic is Implementation of Mass Customization for MEP Layout Design Optimization Using BIM. This is the outline of my presentation. Uh, MEP stands for Mechanical, Electrical, and, and Plumbing, which refers to the three aspects of building design and construction. Uh, in, large, in large commercial projects and industrial projects, or maybe EPC, MEP system generally represents 40 to 60 percent of the total project value, 25 to 40 percent of the total project cost, and almost 50 percent of the total project duration. MEP system, they're generally composed of numerous components with different sizes and shapes, having different complex logic structures among them, as you can see in this figure. These high variety of components affects manufacturing in a negative manner. They generally contribute to a higher cost and longer duration of time because we have variety of components uh, in, in, in this system. So the, and also the current approach of MEP layout design focus only on geometric and functional requirements and is currently manual or maybe semi-automatic, error prone and time consuming. So this research investigate how we can actually try to reduce these high variety of MEP components by using a design strategy or optimization strategy uh, which aims to reduce these high variety of MEP components or you can say standardize MEP components so that we can have a lower manufacturing cost and also enhance the value of uh, MEP design layout. So as lean manufacturing techniques, uh, according to lean manufacturing techniques, mass customization is the ultimate strategy which can be used to tackle manufacturing cost of variety of customized components. So how it can actually help uh, the basic theory of mass customization aims to offer increased product flexibility by standardizing components without increasing manufacturing cost. As you can see in this figure, there are three products, X, Y, Z. They are actually different in their own kinds, but they're using some same standardized modules like A, B, C. So currently it's only three products, but how about if we have thousands of products and they are manufactured by using different, different components. So if we can actually standardize those components and use them to manufacture thousands of products, it will be a great uh, reduction in cost and time, of course. So we are, we are trying to use this strategy into MEP system uh, design. So, like you can see, if suppose this is the pipe layout which we have designed for the plumbing system. So, like the, the designer has designed, and it has so many, like this pipe and this pipe. So, if we can actually try to optimize the design in a manner that we can actually have these standardized modules, A, B, C, and we can use these uh, standardized module A, B, C to form this pipe system layout. So it can be a great help. So the basic idea of my research is to reuse standardized modules uh, in order to uh, produce different, different product variants. After this, I studied uh, lots of literature review based on, like related to MEP design layout, and I found that uh, mainly, uh, researchers have focused on how we can actually tackle uh, geometry and functionality requirement in the, in the building system. But how about if we have so many types of variety of components? How actually manufacturer going to manufacture and reduce cost and time? And, of, and also, they haven't considered constructability issues. Like as you can see here, it's very like weird shapes of shape of uh, path has been chosen. So how about if we are going to manufacture it off-site or maybe assemble it on-site? So it, it, it's kind of a, yeah, tricky or, and it will actually take lots of time and maybe it, it will uh, in, it incur huge cost. And I also had studied about MEP design for prefabrication and modular construction. So researchers have used it so that uh, they, they, they have actually used prefabrication strategies for the modular construction, but they still haven't tackled high variety of components. So even if we are prefabricating the components off-site and we are modularizing it, but how about if they are made up of different, different components? So in this research, we are trying to tackle these research gaps. 
and uh, followed, uh, followed the research and uh, uh, eliminating the research gap. This is my objective. So my uh, objective is to focus on how I can opt design for manufacture approach for MEP's layout system design to reduce manufacturing cost of variety of MEP components by using mass customization. So my objective is actually in three parts. So first is to develop a methodology to automatically design preliminary clash-free layout. Second is to Second is to determine optimal pipe size by performing design functions as per the codes. And third is to design MEP layout design with standardized component by using mass customization strategy. So currently my research scope only focuses on piping system, that is the P aspects of MEP system, but yeah, it can be uh, by with a little improvisation and designing and all, it can be used uh, for the other aspects of MEP. So before going to my framework, which I have developed and proposed, so uh, first of all, I would like to tell what, okay, what is actually a piping system all about. So piping system is an assembly which actually consists of various numerous components put together to transport fluid. Piping system design refers to the physical piping layout to satisfying operating and design conditions. So if I need to design uh, a piping system which has a mass customized component or you can say standardized component, first I need to find an appropriate clash-free routing or you can say sizing option which is given, which is actually sets, uh, satisfying design and operating condition. Uh, so uh, th this is the typical system layout. So you can see, suppose, what is actually length? Length means total summation of the pipes we are using. So L1 plus L2 till L7 is actually the total length of a piping system. So how about the diameter? Diameter which we uh, generally ca calculated by the design function is actually the inside diameter. And the thickness is the thickness of the pipe. And what about height? Height is basically measured from the datum, suppose the supply point, then from the datum to the supply point is the actual height which we are calculating. So something like that we are trying trying to create the pipe system layout having mass customized component or the standardized component. So this is the framework which I have developed. So it mainly consists of part one, part two, and part three. So part three is generally, uh, generally consisting of uh, all the inputs which we require for a project. Suppose the space and geometry and the fluid characteristics, suppose what is it, water, oil, or something. System character, system requirements, and all how much uh, outflow we want. So something like that, and material attributes, what are the pipes and all. And, uh, and, that's, uh, and, and the most important thing is height and length. Uh, uh, Height and length here means uh, what should be the appropriate equipment location we are placing on, or maybe the supply and design, uh, supply and uh, demand points and all. And length is actually the pipe route which we are going to find out by preliminary de uh, de design clash free layout. The second part is actually uh, it will consist of two uh, de design functions. Uh, so first we'll calculate the minimum diameter of the pipe and the second one will focus on the thickness, basically pipe sizing. And third one is the main part which is optimization. So uh, this part will actually optimize the different, different sizes into the standardized components. And then we will perform a design and compliance check so that we can actually verify whether it's actually satisfying the functional requirement or not. And, we, and if it is satisfying, then we will have the optimized pipe layout. Otherwise, we'll repeat the process again. So now I will talk about part one. Part one, um, all uh, like, uh, so the main thing is uh, we, are, we are doing in part one is pipe routing and preliminary layout. So pipe routing is basically the planning of pipe layout, basically how to connect supply and demand points, which, include cons uh, which includes some neatness, economy, and safety and all. So suppose we actually define equipment location then we are trying to consider, okay, suppose this is the supply, uh, supply point and this is the demand point. So what should be the preferable best route so that we can have it uh, maybe according to the shortest path or maybe minimum bends or maybe closer to wall so that we can have it supports to, uh, to hold it or maybe it should, of course it should be clash free. So what we are doing here, we are trying to use this perimeter strategy. What it actually means, suppose this is the supply point and this is the demand point. So if we consider it as a vertex of a rectangle and then try to create the path as per the edges. So suppose this is the supply and demand point. So there will be two parts, this one and this one in 2D. And of course for the 3D we, have, we, will, have, we will have the same 
um, strategy. So uh, we are using this strategy because I, I, I think that this strategy is very good if you are talking about multiple pipe routing and it gives least bend also and ensuring orthogonal connection. And if we have a multiple pipe route, we can actually use the, uh, the we are using this function so that we can, uh, and we will choose the uh, route which is having the minimum length and, uh, and the minimum bends. So now I will talk about part two. After actually uh, getting my pipe, pre preliminary pipe layout, I will perform pipe sizing. So I will, it, it's actually the completion of two independent design functions, the system flow and the pressure integrity design. So the system flow basically gives you minimum acceptable diameter by using Bernoulli's equation and equation of motion. So it's a summation of datum head pressure head and velocity head. And the second is pressure integrity design, which is, uh, which is given by the course. So th by using this formula, we can actually actually get thickness of the pipe by using design pressure and stresses and all. After actually getting, uh, doing pipe routing and pipe sizing, the third is optimization part, which I'm going to use a uh, k-means algorithm. So this is the strategy which I am proposing. Suppose this is the preliminary layout which we have, we, we, actually, uh, we are actually getting from the part uh, one and two, and then it has these number of different sizes and shapes. So and I will use k-means clustering algorithm to, to cluster the similar types of sizes and shapes and try to find out the standardized pi uh, pipes having same uh, sizes and shape, and then try to use these pipes into these clusters and, uh, and develop this optimized layout. So uh, suppose they are L1, L2, L3, so we are using this L1, L2, L3 and trying to optimize, so this is the optimized layout. So uh, what actually K-means cluster does, actually K-means cluster tries to partition N observations, N number of different sizes and shapes into K clustered one, standardized one. So this is the objective function, which actually tries to minimize the variance between the different different class, uh, sizes in, the, in a particular cluster. So if suppose if I still have a two or more than two uh, pipe route, I will use this optimization function, with the one which is having minimum length and minimum bends, and of course there will be penalty function if there is some clash detection exists, and bonus function if I'm using the standardized pipe. After this, I will uh, perform design check and loading service condition check to satisfy that, okay, my, my design is working fine as per the project requirements. And if this actually uh, uh, satisfies this requirement, uh, the optimized pipe system layout will be generated in terms of high, uh, height, length, diameter, and thickness, and otherwise the whole process will be repeated again. So this is the... So this is the example which I tried. So these are the list of objects, you can see column and beam. So this is the preliminary uh, uh, route which I have generated. This is the clash free one using parameter strategy. So it actually has a total 18 pipes and uh, in which 50, there are 15 different types of pipes having different sizes and shapes, sizes. Clustering algorithm, sorry, K means clustering algorithm. And then I can, ha I can develop optimized layout, which is this. So it's actually using five standardized pipes. So those 15 different pipes has been converted to five standardized pipes. So after we can actually satisfy, uh, check and satisfy that this is, uh, this is uh, performing design check and loading uh, service condition check, this will be the optimized. So uh, I would like to conclude my presentation. Yeah, mass customization appears to be an effective approach in order to reduce the manufacturing cost by, uh, by actually reducing vast variety of MEP components. And here we, we, are, we are presenting a theoretical framework to focus on design optimization by opting design for manufacturing approach into MEP system design to reduce manufacturing cost of varieties of MEP components by using mass customized or standardized components. And this is my future work. So as this uh, framework is still theoretical in nature, I will try to validate it uh, in a real life project. And I will also estimate, quantitatively estimate the cost and time that how it can actually uh, benefit the customer. And uh, I will also develop a framework uh, for other trades or for the other aspects like mechanical and electrical. So yeah, thank you. Thank you.